Dreallday.com. What up, y'all? Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. Now, some of y'all might know that I got a channel that's called Dre Stories, where I tell a bunch of stories about stuff that happened that was like funny, mostly off the court stuff. But on this channel, as y'all seen a couple videos I put out earlier, I'm starting to tell some stories here that's more basketball related that had to do with me playing ball and stuff like that, or motivational type stuff that might not even have to do with ball. So this here right here, this story right here is another one about, as you can see the title, when I was playing against this dude who was like a legend in street ball, he played in the N1 mixtape. And before I even get into the story, let me put out a disclaimer because I got to make sure this is clear. This video is not a, a talk shit video where I'm like trying to trash this dude or make myself look like I was better than I was. I'm going to tell you all the story exactly as it happened because I think it was just an interesting story. And I think even though this happened a while back and I never really thought about it, something had happened. The, today when I actually ended up recording this which is not the day that you're watching it but the day that I recorded this that I thought maybe y'all would be interested in hearing this story just about past games and stuff like that since I don't have it on film I just got to tell you what happened so just in case any of y'all know the person I'm talking about or any of y'all was there or any or even the guy who I'm about to talk about if he sees this video he'll know that I'm telling the story exactly as it happened so this is not a, a talk shit trying to shit on nobody video like that and I'm, that's not even my style. I'm not the type of dude who get on social media and say something about somebody that I don't say to their face. And I'm going to tell you the conversation that me and this person had too, face to face, so y'all know exactly how it went down. So anyway, let's get into the story. This had to be like 2009, maybe 2010. I was playing this recreation league in Miami. And I used to play, uh, 2009, 2010, I used to play in a lot of rec leagues. Up until like probably like 2011, I used to play in rec leagues like anywhere from three to six days a week I was playing in all kinds of rec leagues and the girl that I was with at the time she used to come with me to the games and she would film the games whenever she came to the games so sometimes she came and sometimes she didn't come to the games in this particular time actually this particular league she never came to these games as I think the nights that I was playing she had something else to do so anyway I ain't had nobody filming with me at this particular league so thus is why I got to tell you the story instead of showing you the video so one night we playing this league, I remember my man, uh, my man Zeus, he had actually put together the team and my dude Keenan, he was one of my teammates on this team. And we was, we had a pretty good team in this league. We was thinking that we could probably win the championship because this league had like two different divisions. They had like an A league and a B league. And my, I was in, I played in both leagues. And in the, this was the A league team that I'm telling you about, but the B league team, we won the championship. In the A-League team, we were still trying to get to the championship. The season's still going on. One particular night, we in the gym, we about to get ready for our game. We was playing against these dudes from Overtown. And they had like six dudes. Wasn't none of them good, but they all like played hard and they all thought they was tough. You know, they type of dudes who start a fight for no reason. Those type of cats. We wasn't afraid of them. We knew we was going to kick their ass. And I definitely thought that. And then right before the game started, it was like two minutes left in the previous game. You know, in rec league, as soon as one game in, the next game start. So it's like two minutes left in the previous game. We about to get on the court. And I look over towards the doors, like where people walk in the gym. And I see this dude walk in. And I'm like, yo, I know who this dude is. And this dude was this dude named Prime Objective. He used to play. He played a little bit on the M1 mixtape. He, he wasn't like there all the time, but he was on the tour a little bit. He's like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, dude with braids from Washington, D.C. He reminded me of this dude, Alamo. Alamo was my favorite player on the N1 tape. They called him the Black Widow. He had a whole tape like dedicated to him. It was called Skip versus Alamo because Alamo was from New York. And him and Skip was like the same age from the same places. So they would play against each other a lot. But the reason I mentioned Alamo is him and this dude, Prime Objective, was like the same type size, same body types, both like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, with long arms and like two guards who could shoot, who can handle it. So anyway, he walks in the gym. And I'm looking over, I'm like, yo, I know dude from the N1 mixtape. And I told Keenan, my teammate, I was like, yo, dude is from the N1 tape. And he didn't know who he was. He didn't know dude from the N1 tape. Because I guess he didn't watch it as much as I did. So I'm like, okay, we about to play against him. All right, I'm going to make sure I guard him or whatever. So the game starts and we usually do you guard the person who's guarding you. So I guess the dude, prime objective, he's seen my teammate Keenan. He's like, Keenan's like my size. He's a little bit bulkier than me. So I guess he thought... He should guard him. So he, the dude prime wasn't even guarding me. He was guarding my teammate. So <laughs> we get into the game and we was like in a, a back and forth contest with this team, these dudes from Overtown. So it was like 
Their whole team is these bum dudes from Overtown and him and his dude Prime objective. And the dude Prime was killing us. I'm going to keep it real. He was cooking us. This motherfucker was hitting threes. He was hitting fadeaways. He was getting fouled. He wasn't really doing that much on D, but he like 6'7", so he was like their center. He had a couple blocks. Like He blocked my shot one time when I came in the paint. I thought I got fouled then called foul, so he had blocked my shot once. He's hitting J's. He's hitting pull-ups. He's not even that quick. As I could tell, he was older. Like He's a dude... Like he was playing in the D League, like when the D League first came out, like the early 2000s. Back, I don't know if none of y'all was watching back when they had the ESPN2 TV show about the D League. Back then, back when all the teams was in the southeastern part of the country, like Mobile, Alabama, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. That's when all the teams was down in the lower southeast United States before it became like what it is now. He played in it back then, and he played overseas a whole bunch of places, like even more places than I've been to. So anyway, because I knew his background a little bit just because I watched the end one tape. It wasn't that many guys. So and he was one of the guys who was not only like street ball certified, but he was like regular basketball certified. So when he came in there, I was like, yeah, I want to see what this dude could do. And he was killing us. He was cooking us. My dude Keenan wasn't really that good on D like that. At least that particular night he wasn't. So anyway, that night, this dude had like, he had like 35 and they beat us. And I was pissed as hell because their team was trash. Except for this one dude. And he had like more than half day points. And he was just hitting all kinds of J's. Like I switched off on him a couple times and guarded him maybe for like maybe let's say 20 to 35% of the points that he scored, he scored against me. And he this dude could play better than the average rec league dude. Because the thing is when you're playing against guys who play at a certain level, you develop certain habits for playing against them. So you like, all right, I know the level I need to perform at to beat these guys. But he was at a different level. So when I came in playing at the level that I'm used to for beating those dudes, the Overtown dudes, he was at a whole other level. So when I got up on to play D and he raised up the shoot like right in my face, I put a hand up and he was hitting it like I wasn't even there. So I'm like, all right, this dude is at a different level. But by the time I figured it and got a chance to really think about it because the game moves too fast, it was too late for me to adjust. So he ended up with like 30. He was making like 60% of his shots. He was hitting threes like he wasn't even like it wasn't nobody guarding him. He was just killing us. He had about 35 and they won. So I'm like, all right, cool. We had 35, they won. It was a regular season game. So I'm like, all right, we ain't going to lose no more games. We're going to get to the playoffs and we're going to win the championship. The playoffs was like two weeks later. So anyway, that particular night, you know, I was just pissed that he had dropped that 30 because he had gave like a good percentage of it to me, that 30. So I'm like, damn. I'm just trying to figure out where this dude came from because I knew he wasn't from Miami. I'm like, why is he in Miami playing with dudes from Overtown? So I just had an idea. I was like, let me go on Twitter and see if he has a Twitter, right? So I went on Twitter and I typed in his name to see, I actually Google like prime objective Twitter just to see if he had a Twitter and he had a Twitter account, right? So I'm looking at his Twitter and the last tweet that he had posted, I looked at it like the next day. The last tweet he had posted, he had said, yeah, I played in this rec league last night. It was like the easiest 35 I scored in like five years. And I was, I got real pissed about that. I was like, damn, he talking shit about dropping 35. And it's not like he was talking to me. Like he didn't even know who I was. And he probably, even if he's seen this video, he probably wouldn't even remember this, but I remember it. So he was like, yeah, the easiest 35 I had in a minute. So I'm like, damn, this dude talking shit. I was like, I hope he come back to the league and we played him again. Cause he talking shit about this 35. I'm gonna guard him next time and I'm gonna be ready. And that's not gonna happen. So about two weeks later, the playoffs happened in this particular league. And guess who we playing in the first round? That team. And that night, I'm like, all right, I'm guarding this dude. Like, I was mentally prepared for this game, like, the whole day. Because they had, it was the type of league where they put the schedule on a website. And they would put the stats up. That's how I know we had 35, because i seen the stats. So <laughs> I already knew we was playing them, like, three days in advance. So the day of that game, I was, like, mentally ready. I'm physically ready. I'm like, all right, I'm going to guard dude the whole game. And going into this game, really, my mentality was this. I was like, I don't care if I don't score no points this whole game. But I know he's averaging like 30. Because he played like four games in the league. He didn't even play most of the league. But the games he played, he was scoring. So I'm like, if I stop him from getting his 30, we're going to win. Because ain't nobody else in their team got no talent. So all I got to do is stop him. So we get to that game. And before the game starts, and my teammate Keenan was like, yo, who you got, Dre? And I pointed straight to him. I was like, yo, I got him. And the way I I was just in a mental state right then. I remember when I pointed to him, like, yo, I got him. He looked over at me, and he could kind of tell that I was, like, ready to go. Like, it was personal for me that I was going to shut his ass down. I don't think he knew that, but he could tell that I had pointed him out, that I was ready to guard just him. 
So we get into the game, and I'm like face guarding this dude. Like I'm not focusing on grabbing rebounds. I don't care about scoring. All I'm doing is making sure he. Don't, I wasn't even letting him get the ball. Like forget scoring. I'm like, because when he gets the ball, he was a really good scorer. Like he's the type of dude who's seen a lot of different types of defenses because he played a lot of ball. So no matter how you guarded him, he knew a way to get his shot off. So he probably was like, all right, if I get the ball, he knows he can score. And that's what a pro is. So I'm like, all right, I'm not even going to let him get the ball. So I'm face guarding him. Like he tried to come to the perimeter and just catch a pass. I wouldn't let him get the ball. He tried to post up. I was just fronting him. Like I drew a couple offensive fouls on him because he couldn't get the ball in the post because I'm just fronting him. Like I put all my energy into shutting him down on defense. And we ended up winning the game. The score was like, Actually, before we even get to that, he ain't scored no points like the whole game. So we get to like five minutes left. And at one point he caught a pass and I got just a little bit lazy on D. I'm on him, but I'm like right here and I put a hand up when he shot it and he made a three. Boom. So he had three points. The next time down the court, somebody set a screen for him and my teammate didn't help enough on the screen. I'm like, yo, if he get the ball, you got to get up on. You got to ambush his ass because if he gets the shot off, he's going to make it. He has another three. He had two threes back to back. So he has six points. He ain't scored no more points the rest of the game. The final score of the game was like 45 to 40. It was one of those ugly, like, knockdown, drag out, like, battle games. We was going at it, both teams. This is a defensive battle. Neither team, neither, nobody on either team was really doing good offensively, but we won. So at the end of the game, when he subbed out, because during the game, we had kind of started talking shit to each other because he had started getting frustrated because he couldn't get the ball. And mind you, none of his teammates was really that good. He ain't had no good point guard on his team. So nobody could get, even though I was, the way I was playing him defensively, I was denying him the ball. But a good player, if he had a good teammate, they could have got him a, the ball with a good pass. But none of his teammates could play. They didn't understand the game at that level. So he couldn't get the ball. <laughs> so he was getting frustrated and he tried to like start talking shit to me like, oh, you putting all your energy in the defense. And I'm like, motherfucker, you averaging 30, you ain't got no points. Like, don't talk shit to me. Y'all losing. Y'all about to lose and be put out of the playoffs. So we was talking shit just a little bit during the game, not that much. And then he tried to like turn the tables on me. So I had the ball one time and I was dribbling in my left hand. He's like, yeah, he can't go left. He can't go left. And he don't know me. Of course, he don't know that my left might be even better than my motherfucking right. So <laughs> he tried to talk that shit to me. I was like, man, don't try to talk to me, man. You ain't got no points. Y'all about to lose. You the only good player y'all got. You know, so we was doing a little bit of talk, but it wasn't that serious. So the game got near like a minute left and he subbed himself out because the game was pretty much over. He knew he wasn't going to win. And while he was, he went to the sideline, I walked over towards the sideline and started talking shit to him. Like, yeah, you can't talk no shit when you ain't got no points, huh? And one of his men, one of his teammates, actually, he wasn't even a teammate. He was just with them. Like, you know, directly, you just got dudes who's just there. They not even playing. So dude had got up. Like, yo, don't do that. Like, and he started walking towards me like he was going to do something. This little dude was like five, seven. Like, he wanted to do something. So I'm saying something to him. He's saying something to me. A couple people got in between us. Ain't nothing happened. Like, he wasn't going to fight. Because if we was going to fight, we could have fought. There wasn't no security or nothing in there. There wasn't no cops in there nothing like that. So they got, got in between us. Then the game ended and we won. And the dude, prime objective, like he left. And I ain't seen him since. And then one of his one of the teammates from that game came over after the game to like shake our hands. He was like, yo, is it a problem with dude off the court or is it just on the court? And I'm like, the issue with dude was just we was just talking shit during the game. Your man got up off the bench like he wanted to do something. And after the game, like I said, there wasn't no security there. So if something was going to happen, it could have happened easily. Nobody was stopping me or him from doing something. So it doesn't happen. But I ain't never seen dude, the dude prime objective. I never seen him in Miami and no rec league after that. Now, I don't, that don't mean he didn't play. I'm not even saying it like that because I stopped playing in rec leagues like that in Miami a couple years ago. But that's the story of when I went against him. He did kill us the first game, but I shut his ass down the second game. Y'all want to hear more stories like this? Let me know in the comments. Work on your game. Dre all day. Checking out this video. Make sure you follow all my top content up here. Follow me on all your favorite social networks right over here. And make sure you are subscribed to catch all the new content I put on on this channel every single day. Work on your game.